It is no secret that the Miami-Dade condo market is topsy, it's turvy, it's everything in between. And if you don't want to get absolutely destroyed in the market that's coming down the pipeline, barreling towards you like a freight train, then you better pay attention to this video because I've got all the information that you guys need to know in order to make the best informed decision for yourself and for your family. Jake Fletcher here with the Fletcher Group at EXP Realty, your Miami-Dade real estate agent. And uh, I'm excited to bring you guys this update because we have all the data from uh, 2023 in so we can take a look at the whole year. We can look at where real estate's at right now and kind of make some predictions of what's coming down the pipeline, what's coming for us in this market in 2024. Okay, so that's what we're doing in this video. And we're talking about specifically Miami-Dade County, condos, like I mentioned before, in the non-luxury range. So the normal condo market, everything that is $1 million and below, all the way through December 2023, okay? So the first thing I wanna start off with here is active number of listings uh, versus the number of new listings, which are the green and blue lines respectively there. So active number of listings came in at 6,410. That's down 151 units from uh, the month before at 6,561, which is a reduction of 2.3%. However, it's actually 780 more units or 13.9% more from last December year over year right over in this part, okay? Uh, so, a um, little bit more units than year over year in our inventory. We kind of had most of the of this past year, we, we saw inventory increasing, right? A uh, little bit of a decrease month over month, but that's normal for the holidays, right? It's December, less people want to list their homes during the holidays. Makes sense. Um, I'm expecting this inventory line to continue trending upwards over the next year, okay? Now, new listings, that's our blue line there, came in at 1,462 new listings. That's down 356 units or 19.6% month over month. Uh, so much bigger, you know, decrease in the number of new listings than active listings, which makes sense. Again, holidays, who's choosing to go on the market during the holidays? Only people who really, really need to sell, right? Um, now, again, however, that is also up year over year from uh, last December by 13.8%, okay? So pretty decent little uh, you know increase in terms of the new listings that we've seen year over year. Now, let's look at average days on market. Coming up next here with our close price to original price ratio, I'll talk about that and explain what that even is for the people who don't know. Eventually, I'll stop uh, explaining what it is and I'll just assume that you guys are on the level. <laughs> but I try to be nice and inc include everybody, okay? So average days on market uh, actually went up to 78 days from 68 days the month before, which is a 14.7% increase or you know 14.7% slowdown in the market if you wanna look at it like that. Last December was 61 days on market. So also more than last December, 27.9% uh, more to be specific, 27.9% uh, more. Uh, to be specific. Um, now, close price to original price ratio, what the heck is that? It, all it is is the difference between the original price uh, and the, the, in the final sale price uh, expressed as a percentage, and then we average that out across the market. So if a property is listed for you know 500,000 and it sells for 450,000, well, that would be 90% close price to original price ratio, if my math is correct, which I think it is. So <laughs> close price to original price ratio came in at 96.0%, which is actually down from 96.5% in November. Okay, so you know a little bit of some holiday discounts going on, nothing crazy but just enough to stay competitive, basically. Median sale price uh, coming up next here uh, versus our number of sales, okay, which is the green and blue lines, respectively, okay? Now, median sale price, again, for the non-luxury range of $1 million and below, came in at $385,750, okay? And I'm gonna give you guys a little illustration in a second of why I even split this up from luxury to non-luxury. I do this every once in a while just to legitimize my existence now, just <laughs> to explain why I do what I do. Um, now, that $385,750 uh, median sale price for non-luxury condos was down, okay, month over month, $9,250, okay? So that's that close price to original price ratio decreasing. That's the, you know, the, the sales decreasing as we see. Uh, you know, that's the inventory continuing to, to increase uh, overall, even though it didn't increase month over month. 
that's the holidays. All these reasons led to you know a slight decrease in median sale price, uh, 2.3% month over month decrease to be specific, okay? Now, year over year for 2023, condos clocked in a 10.2% increase or $35,750, okay? Now, from 2019's December, uh, condos actually appreciated $150,750 or 64.1% in that nearly four years time, uh, you know, uh, in that, that time span of December, December 2019 to December 2023, okay? So that's also 7.6% uh, more than single family homes appreciated during that time, okay? So pretty interesting. Single family homes appreciated about 57%, uh, condos appreciated about 64%. So, you know, bravo to condos, all right? <laughs> and by the way, you know, like I was saying, without that adjustment for the non-luxury range, you would have seen a median sale price of $415,000 rather than that 385-ish, okay? Now, the reason, again, why I do this is because I'm out here in the trenches, literally like, you know, camouflage paint on my face, you know, metal helmet in the trenches of real estate warfare day in and day out. So to me, that 385000 is a much more accurate depiction of the median priced condo uh, than the four fifteen. dollars because we have such a robust luxury market in Miami for both condos and single family homes that if you don't make this adjustment, I feel like it is a little bit misleading, very much misleading in, in many ways. Um, so that's why I make the adjustment. Um, you know, the top 10% of sales is the luxury market in Miami because again, it's so robust. The, the other 90%, that's the normal market. That's what we look at when we do these. You know, if you're interested in the luxury market, I have another update for that coming, uh, you know, and, and, you know, also a rental update, you know, we try to break it down and not be lazy and just say, oh, you know, $415,000, look at that. Um, you know, we try to break it down. Okay. Anyways, off getting off of my, uh, my, my stump speech here. So you would have seen 415 rather than 385. You would have seen a $5,000 decrease, uh, you know, uh, uh, which is a little less, right? 1.2% decrease month over month, an 11.2% $42,000 increase year over year, and a 69.4% or $170,000 appreciation since December 2019 versus the 150, okay? So it would have made things kind of stretches the numbers a little bit if we don't make those, um, you know, we don't make those alterations for the luxury market and look at it separately from the normal market that almost everybody else is buying in, okay? So sales, our blue line there came in at 882, which is up 12 sales from 870 in November or 1.4% month over month increase. Now, keep in mind that sales are a lagging indicator, meaning, uh, you know, when a sale happens, it actually went under contract a month before or even 45 days or even 60 days, or it could even be more than that. But usually between about 30 to 45 days, uh, you know, sales are, are lagging, right? Which is why you usually see January as the lowest number of sales because, uh, you know, who wants to go under contract and be, you know, under contract for a house during the holidays? Only people that really need to buy, okay? If you had your choice, you probably don't want to have your holiday season, you know, interrupted, so to speak, with a real estate transaction, okay? Now, the sales were also down 135 sales year over year from last December, uh, which is a uh, actually, there was 1,017 last December, so that's a 13.3% decrease year over year. Next up, let's take a look at months of inventory. Not that close of a look. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> these graphs are weird to size today. Anyways, we'll leave it there. Months of inventory. Um, and then expired listings here we're looking at. So months of inventory is how long would it take to sell the existing supply if no new listings came on the market, okay? So months of inventory stayed the same at nine months of inventory from November to December. And last December, we had seven months of inventory, okay? So a little bit slower of a market compared to last year in terms of you know the, the rate of, of sales and the rate of new inventory. Um, however, back in December 2019, um, uh, you know, let's see, back over round here, that's the, the blue line, nope, green line, sorry. Uh, we had 12 months of inventory uh, right here, okay? So, you know, drastically 
quicker than that, three months to be specific, three months of inventory uh, quicker of a market if you want to think about it like that. Um, however, you know, on an upward trend over the last year for the most part, okay? Now, expired listings is next. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's listings where the listing agreement between the listing agent and the seller expired. They're no longer under contract with each other, so the listing is no longer for sale officially, uh, okay? So expired listings came in at 3,169, and that's 1,351 more than the month before, okay? Which is a 74.3% increase. Now, before you, you know, uh, pull the fire alarm <laughs> and freak out, it's always normal to see an increase in December of expired listings because many people will sign their listing agreement with their listing agent uh, for till the end of the year. Okay. They'll say, well, you know, this, well, signing this in, in May or June, when is it good till? It's good till December 31st. Okay. So, you know, that's why you see uh, outsized peak here every December for expired listings. Okay. But overall, we can kind of see a, a trend line if we kind of ignore the Decembers, right? Um, but year over year, this is actually interesting. The December peak of expireds is actually down 622 units or 16.4% compared to last December, okay? Now, inventory is also up 13.6%, which is interesting because usually if you see more inventory, then you, there's more listings to go expired, right? So seeing that increase of, uh, of inventory correlating to the increase in expireds makes all the sense in the world, okay? And as we see more inventory piling up, piling up, piling up, we will see overall more expired listings, most likely. Uh, and especially in December, we'll see a lot, okay? Um, now, uh, there's actually, uh, last December, just to give you some context, there was 7,676 active listings versus 8,717 this de past December, okay? So that's a 1,041 unit difference, okay? So what does this mean? What does this mean if you're a buyer, a seller, an investor? What does it mean, okay? Um, well, if you're a buyer in this market, I've been telling all, all the buyers that I work with that, you know, uh, list prices are like the yellow speed limit signs. They're simply a suggestion. And what you really, really need in this market is a agent that you can trust is going to tell you the actual market value of a property by doing a what's called a comparative market analysis. Not looking at automated valuation models, uh, you know, not looking at, I swear to God, if your agent mentions a Zillow's estimate to you ever, run the other direction. The guy who created Zillow, his house sold for like, like a million and a half dollars less than the Zestimate. Zestimates are garbage, okay? Um, so if your real estate professional ever mentions Zillow, literally run the other way. Um, but you know, you need somebody who's going to actually do a comparative market analysis, which is a quite laborious process if done correctly in order to determine the exact current market value of a property so that you can make an offer on that property that makes sense, okay? Because uh, money is made in real estate on the purchase, not on the sale, okay? Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. If you're a seller in this market, you know, it, it's always been important to market your property correctly, you know, uh, professional marketing, drone photos, you know, Hollywood style video, you know, the best photography that you can get, having a website, you know, all these different things, um, which are all things that I do. Um, but it's also super important to price your property correctly, okay? There's tons of people out here, as you see by the, you know, the number of expireds there in December that are still going on fishing expeditions, okay? Now, you know, you can try to go on a fishing expedition, but it's going to end up hurting you in the long run because what happens is the first two weeks of a listing, of a new listing, are when you have the most eyes on it. It's when you have the most momentum. If you're way overpriced and you're not getting offers and, you know, the people who were interested have decided in their minds, oh, this property is like off the table for me because they're overpriced. The seller's crazy. Who We don't even want to deal with that type of person, Right. What happens is two, three weeks into it, when you've lost all the momentum, you're not even getting any more showings anymore, and you reduce the price, it's real hard to get people to be re-interested in your property, okay? Especially if they've already seen it in person, uh, you know, or they've seen it online and and considered it, but decided that, you know, the price was too much 
it's really hard to get those people reinterested in the property, even with a price cut, uh, because there's just more and more inventory coming on the market. So if mentally they've already decided this one's not an option, they're just going to be waiting for new properties to come on the market. They're not necessarily thinking, oh, hey, let's take a look back at this property. Okay. So it's really important. I cannot stress to you guys enough how important it is to price your property correctly before listing it. Okay. Again, comparative market analysis reveals all. I will put my comparative market analysis skills against any appraiser, any broker, any other agent, any bank in the game. I am meticulous with a capital M and a capital Aticulous <laughs> with my comparative market analysis analyses um, because it's everything. It's literally everything, okay? Um, so, you know, those are my two cents on that. If you're an investor in this market, it's super important to make sure, uh, you know, of the condo finances, that there's reserves, that you're not going to have problems coming down the line that are going to mess up your pro forma, okay? So your numbers have never been more important if you're an investor, uh, you know, running those numbers. If you need help with that, reach out to me. Um, but you also want to do some digging to find out, hey, what's like the budget looking like? What's the financial status of this condominium looking like? What are the reserves looking like? In order to make a determination, are is this condo in good standing with you know financially? Because if not, you know, and and let's say it's thirty something you know year old condo, and you know you got the the forty year recertification, or maybe it's been triggered for a thirty year recertification, depending on the age of the condo. Okay, uh, you know these things. Um, can often reveal problems that are going to be quite costly to fix. Okay. So you can find yourself having like a maintenance fee of 300 something. And then all of a sudden a special assessment is, is tacked on for the next however many years of an extra few, three, four, five hundred, six hundred, who knows how many uh, more hundreds of dollars per month. Okay. So you just went from maybe cash flowing a few hundred dollars on a property to losing a few hundred dollars every month on a property. Okay. And when that happens, what do you think is going to happen? people are going to start selling. What starts happening when a bunch of buildings or a bunch of uh, units go for sale in the same building? Well, guess what? Everybody's buyers start wondering what the hell's wrong with this building, right? People start digging, prices start going down. We are on the precipice of a moment where uh, buildings that do not have sufficient uh, reserves uh, are going to start selling for less ostensibly less than buildings that are in good financial reserve. You give me the same exact units, everything's the same except uh, one of them is an association with reserves versus without reserves. Let's say that uh, you know the one with reserves is is you know worth 450 on the market, right? That one with no reserves probably now worth 400. Not right right now cuz things are still shifting, but in like 6 months or a year, somewhere down the line, I don't know how long it's going to be, but eventually there will be a disparity between condos that don't have reserves and condos that do, okay? So if you're on the board of a condo association, you know, take this as a, a you know, another red flag that you've probably already seen before, uh, you know, other red flags that you need to get your finances in order because Senate Bill uh, 4D is coming down the pipeline January 1st, 2025. All condominium associations that are three stories or higher, uh, buildings, even if there's only one building on the on the the lot that's three stories or higher, those associations are going to have to be in compliance with Senate Bill 4D, meaning they're going to have to have enough structural reserves, uh, you know, in their in their budget. Anyways, getting off my high horse again, uh, but that's how I see the market right now, guys, I think we're going to see much more modest appreciation of prices over the next year. Um, I think the interest rates are going to sort of bounce around in the sixes uh, for people with excellent credit, maybe in the upper fives. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think that we're going to continue to see a strong market in Miami. I think it's going to continue to be the strongest market in America. Um, and, you know, I think that hopefully we'll see the trend of more inventory uh, continuing right after the you know holidays. So, we will find out on this channel right here uh, in a you know couple weeks time when I do the January uh, market updates. So if you like being informed, then you know make sure to hit subscribe, ring the notification bell so you don't miss videos like this in the future. Less, obliterate, smash, destroy, desecrate the like button however you see fit. Um, and, and drop a comment down below. What do you guys think? Uh, and I will respond to every single comment, uh, as a thank you to you guys for, you know, liking, subscribing, commenting, all these things. Okay. So that's the video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you need the help of a verified certified expert in Miami real estate, 
reach out to me. All my contact info is in the description down below, and I'd love to hear from you, talk to you, and help you out to, uh, you know, make sure that you're taken care of, okay? Because a lot of these other people are schlubs. They're schlubbing it, okay? Uh, and I hate to talk bad about people, but I also hate to see the general public um, get sort of taken advantage of by people who aren't experts at their craft, right? You go to a lawyer and they don't even know how to lawyer what's the point, right? You go to a, a real estate uh, you know, agent and they don't even know how to do their job, what's the point, okay? So work with a professional, there's no reason not to, especially if you made it to the end of the video <laughs> this far, right? So thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Jake Fletcher here with the Fletcher Group at eXp Realty, your Miami real estate agent, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.